Welcome to the Real Estate Espresso Podcast, your morning shot of what's new in the world of real estate investing. I'm your host, Victor Manash. On today's show, we're talking about the airline industry. The airlines are critical to virtually everyone in society, including real estate investors. So today, we're talking about the airline industry and the extensive pain they're going through. I've traveled extensively over the years, both for business and pleasure. All manner of travel are currently affected by the COVID-19 outbreak. There's currently 90,000 passengers on cruise ships around the world whose fate is uncertain when their cruises end. Even once they're back on land, the reality of flights home might be far different than when they boarded the ship. Most airlines have announced massive reductions in capacity in recent days. Many international routes have been cut by 85%, in some cases 100%, and domestic routes have been cut by anywhere from 10 to 50%. WestJet Flight Attendance Union announced they expect layoffs of 50% of the airline staff in the coming weeks. So far, a consortium of airline industry have asked the U.S. federal government for an aid package of $50 billion. This is a combination of loans, loan guarantees, and grants. The trade group argued that roughly half of the proposed assistance, $25 billion, should come in the form of direct grants to the airlines. The proposal also outlines a $25 billion program in which the Federal Reserve would purchase financial instruments from or provide interest rate loans or loan guarantees to the carriers. United Airlines alone estimates that its revenue is down $1.5 billion in March from a year ago. United canceled their new pilot training program, but oddly enough, Air Canada is looking past the current business interruption and continuing to hire and train pilots. A4A also proposed $8 billion in grants and guarantees for cargo carriers. U.S. airports are separately seeking $10 billion in assistance to cover full-year losses that are already approaching $9 billion. The airports collect their revenue through landing fees that are charged to each passenger as a supplement to the airfare, and this pays for the operation of the airport and the debt due on any airport improvements. In a matter of days, American Airlines managed to reach an agreement with its pilots' union. These negotiations typically take months of dialogue, and you can often see the can getting kicked down the road many times. Now, when this downturn ends, the airlines will need to spin up capacity very quickly, but in order to do that, the pilots need to remain current. They need to complete at least three landings as pilot in command within the past 90 days. They also need to remain current on their medical and any flight tests. So when a pilot is qualified to fly, They're certified on a single aircraft and only that aircraft. You're not going to have an Airbus A320 pilot all of a sudden switch to a Boeing 787. It's a completely different equipment rating. You can do all of this work in the simulator. As part of the agreement with the pilots, they agreed on three different workforce reductions. Number one, a voluntary leave of absence for up to a year, and this is unpaid and they maintain benefits. Number two, a voluntary short-term leave of absence where they're going to be paid 55 hours a month and it leaves them with either one, three, or six months leave of absence. And then finally, number three, a voluntary early retirement. And pilots would be paid 55 hours a month until age 65. You've got to be at least 62 years of age to qualify. They maintain their medical benefits. And this third option is permanent, cannot be changed by either the pilot or the airline. It's reasonable to expect that other major carriers will negotiate similar agreements with their pilots in the coming days. The big question is, How long will this disruption last? Like we said on yesterday's show, is this an economic blizzard or an economic winter? Some estimates I've seen have suggested that if the lockdowns we are seeing in the economy are successful in slowing the spread of COVID-19, that the time that will be required to limit the spread through the population will in fact be extended. We're not into this for just a few weeks. We could be seeing an extended period of reduced social contact and therefore an extended period of economic slowdown. Will the airlines undergo substantial long-term shrinkage in the industry as a result? The airline industry is designed to keep moving in order to keep operational. Disruptions become incredibly difficult to handle. And this can ultimately affect the movement not only of people but goods. And the global supply chains that rely on air transportation just got another massive kick in the teeth. Many of the airlines have experienced a decade of strong profitability since the last economic downturn they built reasonable cash reserves, but none of them have the financial strength to withstand a protracted downturn. The White House has been clear that maintaining the airline industry as a priority is a matter of national security. And some lawmakers have opposed the bailout, saying that protecting workers is a priority above protecting corporations. And perhaps those elected officials don't realize that the path to paying the workers is through the companies themselves, without which there is no employment. 
many of the airlines have accessed their lines of credit in order to bring additional cash into the company. Executives have also flagged their access to potentially billions in capital by borrowing against aircraft and other assets, for example, frequent flyer programs. But it's not obvious whether the capital groups will value the aircraft at full value in the presence of a massive global downturn in air travel. The airlines are just another of the hundreds of industries where similar questions are being raised. As you think about that, be sure to take steps to preserve cash and reduce expenses. Do that now. Have an awesome rest of your day. Go make some great things happen. I'll talk to you again tomorrow.